What's happening, Wargamers? Welcome to another episode of The Dossier, uh, the Marvel Crisis Protocol show, where we take a look at all Crisis Protocol characters. We take a look at their, uh, their models, what we like, what we don't like about their designs, and then uh, always take a peek at their cards and what they might bring to the table. Remember, these are not comprehensive videos. There's lots of really great discussion out here. These are just to kind of give you a brief overview and idea of what to expect from the character and maybe start forming your own opinions and getting you involved in the conversation a little bit. Uh, so definitely encourage you to, to seek out those discussions. This week's video, or today's video, we are looking at the super spy himself, Nick Fury, Nicholas J. Fury Jr. Uh, probably one of my favorite models in the game, both the play and uh, and the look of it. So let's uh, let's dive right in here as I get some stuff moved down the way. So we have Nick Fury here, and oh geez, a lot of light kicking around here. And uh, I just I just really like this model. I've I've always really liked the pose. I like the fact that he's just a regular human. Although from what I understand, I think he has a some super soldier serum in him or something like that. But I like that he he is not a superhero in the same sense as a lot of other uh, characters we have in the game. He he is bringing his wits, his ingenuity to the game, and that's reflected in a lot of what he does on the table, uh, especially with his cards. The model itself, very easy to assemble. I mean, we've seen this before. It's the Defiant Pose standing out there. I like the billowing out uh, uh, trench coat. That's always really nice. The gun in one hand. Uh, otherwise, it's a very simple model, and I, I like it a lot. I can't I can't stress that one enough. I had a lot of fun painting this model, and uh, ever since he came out, I, I've been a S.H.I.E.L.D. player as a result. Um, so, yeah, all in all, I, I think he's just he's a great, great model for, for that sort of stuff. Um, so his card itself, there is a lot that we have to talk about on his card. And before we go anywhere, I want to talk about the fact that he was the first character to introduce grunts. And that is the shield agents. So we got those fellas right over here. So the shield agents come with uh, three guys on a table or on a base. Nothing really special about them. Very easy to assemble. For the most part, I, I like them. Um, it did have kind of this floating rope that I think a lot of people have broke. You can see even broke on mine here. Uh, but very simple model to to put together uh, and paint up. And the shield agents themselves uh, have a very modest stat line. Two stamina, medium movement, size two, ones across the board with defense. Their attack is a range three, four dice pistol attack, physical. It's got buy you time. Uh, when this character drops an objective token, the controlling player places it on the battlefield instead of the opponent. This is an incredibly powerful ability. Cannot stress that enough. Uh, and then they got shield operatives. Uh, this character cannot secure objective tokens, and the character does not have to pay power when interacting with civilian or asset tokens. So, not a lot going on on their own, but they bring a lot of utility. Being able to uh, kind of grab an asset or a civilian token, like basically an extract token uh, very early on, and being able to place it after they go down, it's really kind of cool. And it synergizes well with the Fury leadership. On top of all that, it allows uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, to kind of do some interesting uh, objective plays. I know the popular mentality is like you always try to keep these guys alive because they do add a whole bunch of extra dice. I honestly don't mind putting them forward and having them sort of take a hit early on to give uh, give Fury a power and maybe pop an objective a little bit further back. I, I usually consider them a, a relatively safe midline extract play as a result because uh, they're pretty easy to bring back as well. As for Fury himself, so we see here he's got uh, six stamina on his front, five on his back, medium move, size two, four threat, four three four for his defenses. All in all, I like it. It's it's very it's very good defenses. That that four physical is really kind of nice. The four mystic is always nice. Would have been nice to get a three or four energy on there, but you know beggars can't be choosers on that one. We have the Fury Special. This is kind of his bread and butter. Range 3, 5 dice with a uh, gainer attack for 1 power with a wild pierce. This is an amazingly consistent attack because of that pierce. Uh, it, it really synergizes well with everything else that he's basically trying to do. He doesn't necessarily always want to be in that range 3 uh, because that means he can very much be threatened. But when he is, he's very capable of fighting back, which I'm a big fan of. Uh, we got the Tactile Knife, uh, or as I like to call it, the Tactile Shank. It is a range 2 5 dice attack. It is a uh, builder, unlike the pre previous one, but it also has a wild bleed on top of the wild pierce. If something gets too close to Fury, uh, I mean, one one good tactical knifing can do a lot of work. Uh, bleed is one of those conditions that you never think about it until it's actually a problem. So it's, it's always kind of nice to have. Uh, then we have lead from the front. This is probably one of my favorite attacks in the game. 
three day or three range, seven days for three power. After the attack is resolved, an allied shield agent's character within three of this character may advance short toward the target character. Then the shield agent's character may make a pistol's attack targeting that character. So this goes back to that synergy we were talking about. If you have the power to do a lead from the front, you're basically throwing 11 dice uh, at a target character. And at three power, it's not too expensive to do it two times. I have absolutely cleaned up boards with this attack. It is so much fun to use. Those shield agents always have a weird habit of punching way above their weight in my case. Uh, so I, I love this attack. If, if you give Fury the chance to do a lead from the front, he is going to get a lot of work done for you, even if your dice just come out average. So I like it a lot. Uh, next up, he comes with the last line of defense, which is a shield-affiliated leadership. It has two parts. If you have fewer VPs than your opponent, the first time each round an allied character is dazed or KO'd by an enemy effect, after the effect is resolved, you score one VP. Grunts do count towards this. Uh, it is a great way of playing the game uh, and trying to like claw your way back. It's also why you see a lot of shield players tend to play from behind, because this, uh, this leadership kind of keeps them in the game quite a bit. Then if you happen to have an equal or more VP than your opponent, uh, anytime an enemy character da damages an allied character with an attack, you can spend one power and they basically get aggressive. Uh, I have surprised a number of people with this one because they always forget about it. Uh, I'm also like running She-Hulk in my shield quite a bit. Her getting a double aggressive surprises people a lot. <laughs> and it's one of those things where, you know, getting, getting the character up can be the difference between holding an objective or not holding an objective or even being in a better range to double tap someone uh, as you go into your next, uh, your next activation. A lot of people always forget about this leadership, uh, that particular one of it. I think it's great. I, I love it. Very early on, I ran a very aggressive shield list with uh, with She-Hulk and, and Sabretooth, and, you know, there, there was some good fun there. Uh, we got Colin the Cavalry, which is a two-power active ability. If the shield agents are not in play, basically you pay two, place them within three the uh, uh, of this character with an activated token, and they can immediately interact with one extract uh, objective. This is such a good way of grabbing an objective that's might have been dropped on the ground. I've had a number of games where people have forced me to drop an objective, thought it was a safe uh, all the way away, like all the way on the other side of the board, only for Fury to to move, pay to place those uh, those shield agents, and all of a sudden I have that objective back again. Really good, I love it. Uh, then we have Director of Shield. When an Allied Shield agent's character is within three of this character, you may reroll one of its attack or defense dice, and then Fury will gain one power whenever the Allied character deals damage or suffers damage. Great way of, uh, of powering up Fury. Uh, like I said, I like to put my grunts out there very early on, kind of bait down an attack or two. Even better if it's an attack they can survive, because it's a way of giving Fury a little bit of extra power without using a lot of resources. Uh, and then it's important to note he has probably one of the most uh, frustrating cards in the game for a lot of people to deal with. That is Eye in the Sky. It's an unaffiliated reactive card. Fury has to spend three power to play this card. But basically, when an allied character is targeted by an attack, you spend the power on Fury. That targeted character may make a short advance. Um, if at the end of the advance, the character is outside the attack's uh, range or the line of sight, the attack ends. If it's the character's activation and the, the attack did not attack multiple characters, the, character, uh, the attacker may make another action. Uh, and then if you're using shield, this card comes back to your hand during the cleanup phase and can be played again. This is such an amazing card. Uh, there's a lot of debate as to whether or not it's, it's considered broken or bust or anything like that. I don't think it is, because first off, it's it's only Nick that can play it. It's three power that he has to play. Uh, and, I mean, it, we have similar uh, mechanics out there like that. Kind of like Lifesaver or uh, or Loki's God of Mischief. or I think it's God of Mischief. Uh, or the, uh, what is it, um, there's the other card, Escort to Safety. The big advantage of this one, though, is that it is just an advance. It doesn't have to be away from a uh, character, so you have a lot more freedom of how you want to move around. So maybe you can move into cover, maybe you can move on a line of sight. There's a lot of stuff you can do with it. Uh, very powerful card, and basically, right now, almost every time you play Shield, you need to be aware of this card, and you got to play around this card, because it can be... It can really ruin a good thing, um, especially considering uh, if you use it as part of a charge or something like that. You know, you'll still get the movement, but you'll lose the attack. You'll spend the power. Uh, alternatively, something like uh, any mechanic that says, you know, during the next attack uh, you make, this can really ruin that if you're adding a whole bunch of dice to that next attack because it will cause that attack to end. You'll get an action refunded. And 
unfortunately, a lot of those things are usually one use only. So it has a lot of uh, defensive power to keep your guys alive. So yeah, that is that is Fury and the Grunts. Now, my personal feeling on the Grunts is that I don't like them being in the game, but I mean, I'm going to take advantage of them if they are. I think they I think they play really well. Uh, I enjoy the play style uh, with Fury and the Grunts. I mean, as I said, I'm I'm a big Shield player. Fury pretty much loves his home affiliation, but there are some places that you can kind of get some interesting play with him outside of it. Uh, like the, the grunts being able to pick up an extract is super powerful, especially if you're playing a tall team. The fact that he comes with two bodies uh, in there can be really beneficial. I've enjoyed playing him with um, with Sentinels. I've thrown him into uh, Defenders a couple times. Uh, I've just I just play around with him a little bit. Like I don't think there's anywhere he really likes more than Shield himself. But at the same time, if you're able to get him power and he can do leap from the front on a regular basis, that is a lot of damage output that he can do, and it kind of catches people off guard quite a bit. So that is Nick Fury Jr. and the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Leave your comments below, let us know what you like, didn't like, what you think about the character as well, and we will see you next time. Happy Wargaming.